This month, we are very pleased to receive Phil Lynch, who is the new director of the International Service for Human Rights. Phil arrived from Australia uh, in January, taking over um, ISHR, and we are here to, to talk with him um, about him, to hear his, uh, his thoughts on uh, uh, this organization, on uh, human rights in Geneva. So, uh, Phil, thank you very much for this. We've known each other from, uh, from before. It's a pleasure to have you in Geneva. Oh, it's an absolute uh, pleasure to be here, Roland. Thank you. And uh, so, yeah, maybe you can start by explaining your background and where you, where you come from and what you did before joining uh, ISHR. Sure. So, um, I have a background as a domestic human rights defender. Uh, I've worked for almost 15 years, uh, initially uh, running a specialist homeless persons legal service, so involved in economic, social and cultural rights advocacy and the promotion and protection of uh, the human rights of people who are homeless or experiencing poverty and particularly extreme poverty. Um, following that, I worked for a number of years for a specialist uh, human rights law advocacy organisation that focused on the promotion and protection of human rights in Australia um, and also in the region insofar as uh, human rights were affected by Australian foreign policy. And in this work, you were, um, I mean, for the, especially the second work, you were engaged in the UPR process of Australia, so you had, um, um, you had opportunities to come to Geneva to engage with treaty bodies and the UPR and the Human Rights Council as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in, in both roles, uh, although the focus was on domestic human rights issues, we used international human rights mechanisms to seek to affect human rights change on the ground. And we found that the treaty bodies, the special procedures, and also the universal periodic review process of the Human Rights Council uh, were all very effective in um, being leveraged as uh, tools for human rights change on the ground. And um, so this is this is a new a new challenge for you. The two previous organisations uh, you were engaged with them from the beginning, and now you are you're, you're joining uh, the International Service for Human Rights. So what's um, what made you uh, maybe uh, take take up this position, and what's your what's your thoughts on uh, on this on this organisation, and and where do you see yourself uh, going with this organisation? Uh, it well, it is a big change. It's uh, it involves me moving myself and my family overseas. Uh, and coming into an organisation that is not a start-up organisation but in fact has a, a very proud and strong 30-year history and I'm very keen to it and committed to build on um, that very strong history. So what has been your, your three first months here in Geneva? What have you been engaged in? What have you been working on as a director of ASHR? Uh, well, I've been finding my feet initially and I've been made to feel very, very welcome by... Adjusting to the cold as well? Adjusting to the cold indeed. Um, I've met, been made to feel very welcome by the, 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 the staff and colleagues here, but also the very um, collaborative and collegiate NGO community in Geneva more generally. Um, it's been a, a really busy few months. Uh, I started at ISHR uh, at a time when we were just about to embark on a new strategic planning process, so uh, a, a big focus has been the development of a, a new strategic framework which will really um, strengthen our work in supporting human rights defenders, in strengthening human rights mechanisms and systems, uh, and build on our strong history of leading coalitions for human rights change. Uh, operationally, I was also very closely involved in the 22nd session of the Human Rights Council, mm -hmm. uh, and together with the, the, the team, uh, we were responsible for some really great outcomes from that session, including, of course, uh, the resolution. adoption of a resolution on human rights defenders, and in particular the protection of and the criminalisation of human rights defenders. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of um, engaging with uh, the different uh, the different mechanisms and your new strategic plan, what were the outcome of this strategic plan? What's going to be the ISHR's role in the in the future? Do you see a change, a, a swift in the position of ISHR? Or? Uh, not not a radical change. I think a, a, um, an evolutionary change. Uh, as I say, I'm, I'm committed to ISHR building on its strong track mm -hmm. record of coordinating yes. and catalyzing change uh, and focusing uh, very strongly uh, where it can make an impact uh, on identifying significant opportunities for reform or significant threats of regress uh, and being very targeted and strategic in the way we support human rights defenders whether they're women human rights defenders or defenders working on issues of corporate accountability or defenders in transitional democracies, uh, very focused on strengthening human rights systems. I mentioned earlier the importance of the, 
the current treaty body strengthening process, of course making sure that the second cycle of the UPR is successful, uh, and on leading coalitions for change. And what's going to be the next, um, you're going to be engaged in the next Human Rights Council session, what's, what are the next steps for you in the, in the coming months? Uh, well, at the moment we have staff attending the African Commission, mm -hmm. of course the ISHR doesn't just yeah. work at the international level, uh, but also seeks to work at, at the regional level and in particular in, in mm -hmm. Africa. Uh, so we're currently engaged with the African Commission uh, looking at the issue of the protection of human rights defenders uh, and also the prevention of and accountability for reprisals. Uh, looking forward to the, the, the coming council session, a big priority uh, for ISHR will be a resolution, a landmark resolution on sexual orientation and gender identity issues. For this coming Human Rights Council session in June? For the June session. Mm -hmm. uh, and then looking further ahead in, in September, a big issue will be uh, that of reprisals. It's likely that there'll be a, a significant resolution mm -hmm. around the prevention Specifically of Specifically on reprisals. reprisals. Yeah. Because there's the Gen uh, Secretary, Secretary General uh, Annual Report coming up in September. Yeah, in days. The other big issue for us uh, with our focus on women human rights defenders at the mm -hmm. June session will be the resolution on violence against women. Okay, with the prospect of human rights defenders. Yeah. Great, well, a lot of work ahead. Sure is. Um, as I say, it's, uh, uh, I'm privileged to work with a, a very committed, passionate, dynamic staff team here and, uh, and, and to have been made to feel very welcome uh, by a, a great NGO community, um, not the least of which is UPR Info. Well, thank you. We're very pleased to, to have you uh, certainly in Geneva and to build on this, uh, this, this, um, this, new, um, this new staff for the organization of ISHR. We're very pleased of that. And obviously, we'll be uh, working closely together. Uh, good luck with uh, the next few months and years uh, here in Geneva, and we'll, uh, we'll certainly uh, be in touch. Great. Thank you, Rob. Thank you.